What's up, y'all? My name's Bill, and this is how I do it. I'm coming back at you with another video. Today, I'm working on a Craftsman T-130, and it's mine. I picked this thing up. It wasn't a curb alert, but I got it for the cheap. Let's say below $100. Okay, it has a few issues. He told me, he told me about two of them. He told me that he couldn't crank it with the key. And he also told me the PTO cable was broken. He also told me that he was cranking it with, by the starter, connecting the wires up or whatever. And so he told me it ran. I believed him. And he said something about he was pulling the the PTO cable that's broken and engaged it and, and cut his grass with it or whatever. You can see it has a little burnt spot on it. Man, the guy's house burned down he was in the process of building another house when i showed up so uh this one had a little damage but nothing serious it was just a cover right there so first things first man i want to see if we can get this thing to turn over so let's do that all right first things first man let's take a look under the hood see what we work on Ooh, this thing looks a little dirty a little dirty a little nasty right there um I already drained the gas out because the gas looked like it had water in it. Cue the footage. It looked like it had some, some water in the gas, so I drained that out. So the engine looks dirty, grimy. Man, it looked like the original um, oil filter on there as well. Or he might have just got Briggs oil filters. Let's hope so. Uh, while we over here, we might as well look at the gas. Uh, I mean, the oil. Look at the oil stick. Wow, this unit hasn't been used much. It's right on the money. And it looks, and it oil looks good too. So let's see what happens when we hit the key. I got the brake. I got the brake down. Nope. Parking brake on. Nothing. Battery saying nothing. Okay. I took the battery off. I put it on charge. Um, I don't, this is, it was saying that it was a bad battery, but it did accept a little charge. So I do look for this battery to at least, may not turn it over, but at least hit and just let me know that, um, the ignition system is working. So, uh, let's take a look and I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of times, man, cause I want to say he said he changed the ignition switch out and I'm going to tell you something when when you do what I just did, you turn it over, it didn't say anything, it didn't do anything. Um sometimes it's a it's a fuse on the back of these mowers. A lot of people don't know about them, and a lot of good mowers have been thrown away because of a fuse. So, I mean, keep throwing your mowers away and call me, I'll come get them. But you know, if you want to fix it yourself, I'm gonna show you where that fuse is located at. First things first, man, let's check this battery out. All right, let's remove the battery and I'm gonna show y'all where the fuse is. All right, so let's get these cables off. I already got them loosened up. Let's take this battery out of here. All right. Let's look at this. It's a fuse on the back side here. Hopefully, my camera is picking this up. If not, I'll take a picture of it. All right, so let's take a look at the fuse. Uh, got that out. Ah, uh, this fuse is blown. It's bad. Number of things could have did it. All right, let's replace that fuse. Uh, the one that came out is a 25. I don't have any 25s. I got a 30. It'll work just fine. Some experts say no, but it'll be okay. Boom. Got that put in there just fine. All right, let's put our new used battery in here. Hook this bad boy up. Okay, we got that on. So, we got the fuse replaced. 
fresh battery in tow. All right, let's see what we got as far as the cranking goes. Look at that. That right there lets you know. Bad fuse, didn't have a bad ignition. You just had a bad fuse. Um, unit turns over fine. I wanna know, will this thing hit on starter fluid? Got a little bit of that hot sauce. That ether, that, that make your soul this, burn this slow. Exposed the air cleaner. Ooh, this thing's dirty. Yeah, I need to clean this out some. All right, so we're gonna, yeah, there ain't no need in really choking it because I don't have any gas hooked up. But let's just see. Spray a little starter fluid on here. And let's see if it hits. Oh, man, it hits. Yo. Hey, that's what I was looking for right there. That's what I was looking for. Now we just got to get some gas. Well, yeah, gas to the carburetor, to the engine. It, this thing is, it's a runner. It's going to run. But, uh, man, it's a little dirty. I want to clean it up a little bit. But I don't know. I, I know it runs, though. So, let me see something real quick. Okay. All right. Man, this thing's a runner, man. This thing's a runner. Ah, we gotta clean this thing up too, man. That uh, air filter looks dirty. All this stuff looks dirty. Looks dirty, man. All this stuff looks dirty. Man, I'm losing daylight, man, but we do know we got a runner. All right, we back. Let's get it. All right, man, so time restraints cut us off yesterday, unfortunately. Now, when I took off that, that filter yesterday, the air filter, I discovered, man, it was some rat poop. Rap dookie, rat dookie. Whatever you want to call it, feces, it was in there. So what I'm gonna wanna do, I wanna take this cover off because I thought it looked like I had a nest or something in there as well. So I'm gonna take this hood scoop off and I'm gonna take this cover off here. So let's get that done. Knees to the right. Turn this one to the right. And boom. All right, now I'm gonna get our hood scoop. And we're just gonna pull that out of the way. I need to clean that too. All right, so now we got access to the case. I mean, a cover. So let's go ahead and uh, take this cover off. It looks like we have a few bolts here and it comes straight off. So let's take this filter back off. It's really dirty. So I got a replacement filter anyway, so take a good look. It's the last time you're gonna see it. Let's launch this in the back of the truck. I missed. <laughs> That's all right though. Those look to be about 10 millimeter. I might have to take the gas can off. Yep, I'm gonna have to get 10 millimeter wrench. Well, we had to get a 3 8 screws out all right let's get this cover up Boom, look at that rat nest I thought it was one there Definitely was a rat nest in here. Wow. Man, rat piss is very corrosive. 
Jeez. Dang. It don't look like they bit up no wires or anything though, so that's a good thing. See, if I would've ran that the way, like rape right, that's raw like like that, man, all that could have caught on fire. And then where would I be? Dang, in shambles. So it's good that we did take this off. Let me see if I can go get a glove or something. I don't want to really touch this without having gloves on. Oh, I wish I could blow all this out. All right, let's see if we can get this rat nest out of here. I get They're back on there. Let's get these bolts back in. Start with the two back ones. It's gonna be tons of fun. a new air filter that's a new air filter new air filter that we're gonna put on just like that boom boom Assembly. Ooh. Gotta wash this off. This looks filthy. Alright, man. Let's go ahead and put a cover back on. Let's get our gas jug back on. Man, my plan is to come through and power wash this once I get done with this, but we're gonna see how all that goes. how that goes I don't know how it's gonna go Gas tank back on. Gas tank bracket. Bam. All right. Gas tank bracket is back on. So, got everything cleaned up a little bit. So next thing I want to do, I want to put put us a cutoff switch and change this filter right here. So let's do that. And then we're gonna put some gas in here and see if it runs. So let's take this other filter. Let's take this filter off and replace it with a filter in our pack here. Let's go ahead and get this filter off of here.
care about this filter. So I'm gonna put this filter on. I just hope it ain't stopped up, man. That's what I'm hoping. I do care about that. The carburetor stopped up, I mean. I don't think it is though. Got that on. And I'm gonna put this cutoff switch in the mix. I guess I should say cutoff valve. I'll put it about right there. I guess that'll work. Let me just cut this off right here. Another cutoff switch. I mean, another clamp. I'm talking about. Boom. Right there. Got another clamp right there. And boom. There it is. All right, let's crank let's crank this bad boy up. It's still hitting, but it's not pulling any gas through that carburetor. So something's gumming up that carburetor. Could be a bad solenoid. Something's going on with that carburetor. So uh, we don't have to take a look at it. You know, see what's going on with. It. All right, first things first. I gotta take this hose off. Gas gonna drain out. You see the two uh, nuts right there, and the carburetor just comes straight out. Okay, rather than taking the bolts off the carburetor, I decided to take the bolts from the intake. The 12 millimeter bolts, and it made it a lot easier just to get it, take those bolts off, remove the intake, like so. Okay, here it is. Here is the carburetor in its rat feces and pea covered glory. And this is just a little diagram that I made of the carburetor, the top of it anyway, where you can see what a throttle cable, governor spring, fuel line, choke lever, and uh, electrical connection will be at. Also, there is a solenoid under the bottom of the carburetor and it has its own electrical connection as well. I think I figured out my issue with the carburetor. It wasn't ac the actual carburetor. It was this uh, solenoid valve. Um, what it was, it was stuck. And what I did was I just moved it a little bit and freed it up. And now when I supply 12 volts, it moves. Like, when you supply 12 volts, it unplugs and lets gas flow through. But when you turn the switch off, it plugs it up so no gas will flow through. So what happened, what was going on, it was stuck open the entire time. 
So I remember the little stuff closed, wasn't allowing gas. So now that's working now. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the PTO cable. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, man, the guy had rigged up uh, one of those um, rubber tie downs, and he was basically he was pulling the um, PTO lever to engage it. And then he will hook it around the axle somehow and keep it in place. And then when he wanted to shut it off, he would get it and remove it. Really unsafe. So I decided to install a new um, PTO cable. And you can see where the old cable has broken off at right here. So um, what I did was I went to Amazon and ordered a new cable and attached it. Right here is the location on the back side underneath the battery to the right where the cable engages with the lever and this is the connection that the cable uses as leverage so in my opinion the best way to do it is to connect the bolt up to the loop on the end of the cable first and then stretch it to put that connection into the bracket part and that way it's a lot easier because you can't really stretch it enough because there's not enough room in there to pull that loop into that uh, screw to screw it on there. The best thing to do is to screw um, the bolt into that loop first and then stretch it and put it into that bracket. All right, we got this thing fixed up. It's Craftsman T-130. We got the carburetor cleaned out. We got the PTO cable put on. And if you look, I even got a new ignition switch panel got that on what else did we do that oh yeah we changed that fuse in the beginning so we got this thing fixed up and now i'm gonna do a little cutting with it just to show that everything is working properly all right let's get on this bad boy crank it up do a little cutting on it all right part break down Got the choke on, crank it up. Choke down, bad boy ready to go. So let's do it.
there you have it. This bad boy is ready to go. This is how I do it. <laughs>